Hello everyone, and welcome here to the Daily Quest number 51. My name is Solid Jake, and today we are talking about Jaina. Hopefully all the levels are Gucci. Oh, man, the, the camera is like so zoomed out, because we did a recording of a tournament last night. Oh, that's weird, zooming it in. Such fun. Overwatch, been destroying my soul many late nights, enjoying the new game, getting a feel for all the systems and the potential of what that game could come to be. And, oh, hello, cat. Oh, she's afraid. She she doesn't like it when I get too excited. I, go, I get those, those vigorous scoops where you pick her up, and she just, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like being scooped. She likes to jump on up on her own accord, and I'm sure she'll do that if she's given the chance. Well, today is a little bit different. Now, moving forward with the daily quest, I'm... I'm concerned about my my capability of fulfilling daily quests to the exact standard that I've been going for when it comes to watching a lot of replays and preparing them for most episodes, um, building graphics to show the the talents for each one. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking at something new today, a little bit more of a free flowing, still very educational focused, but a little bit more condensed style where we're gonna go through all the options of Jaina. So we're gonna tell you everything about this hero, how to play her, the styles and the different builds that work, but we're gonna do it all within the game and just a website itself. This is because that um, once there's a lot of tournaments happening, we know a lot of the regionals are coming up, there's a good chance I'll be traveling. And last year, in similar situations, I could have been traveling for up to five weeks at a time where I wasn't home. So. In the event that I do manage to somehow get a laptop so I can actually create content when I'm on the road, I will continue creating daily quests, but I need to do it in a little bit more of a, uh, a resource efficient way because my home setup is, is very powerful. I have a lot of great tools at home and it's, you know, I've, I've got tons of equipment that allow me to do this very efficiently. But if I am traveling and I do manage to get a laptop, I'm going to try to continue doing it in a different method, different formula. Anyways, enough rambling, enough rambling. I think you guys get the point. Let's talk about Jaina. She is a phenomenal hero that just saw a small buff. Now, Jaina has always been prominent in the meta for Heroes of the Storm, right? Always. Ever since she's been added to the game at BlizzCon two years ago, they unveiled Jaina and Thrall. I think it was just the two of them. Lost Vikings as well. Uh, they unveiled those three heroes. And Jaina was like insta- Insta, you know, love at first sight for me. She's the first true mage they, they put into the game before Kael'thas and Li Ming. And uh, she has just been received change where they, they upped the damage on Frostbolt quite a bit. They nerfed her auto attacks to make her feel a little bit more just mage oriented. And they also buffed Cone of Cold just a teensy bit as well. Uh, as a result, this gives her slightly more burst potential and it opens up a few more build options uh, for this hero. We can quickly just show the battle.net changes from yesterday. If you watch my, my VOD of going through all this, and if you've read the patch notes, you already are well aware, but you see her basic attack damage has gone down significantly, 89 down to 60. The Frostbolt damage from 160 to 190, it's a nice big change. And Cone of Cold up a bit as well. The scale's the same, they haven't changed that, but it does start higher, and this opens up more flexibility to go for a Frostbolt build with Jaina in general, which is something we really don't see. So we're going to use a combination of gameplay and HeroesNexus.com, which is where I like to build all of my, my talent guides and whatnot for this video. Jaina is just rambling away. Now, Jaina is a hero that excels at poking, you know, just safely. She's She's got phenomenal AoE damage. She's got good lane clear. When it comes to single target, ver you know, single target is often valued, not only for you know fighting other heroes, but single target tends to be superior when it comes to pressuring a tower. You think of taking out early game towers to give your team a slight edge on XP, especially when you're trying to get level four first for a talent tier advantage. Whittling down those, those towers can be very valuable. Frostbolt is great for that. Actually, your whole kit is good for it. Uh, if you're if you're fighting against a map objective in Immortal, or you're just trying to collect a plant terror to get yourself a lot of seeds for your team, Jane is very good for that as well. Frostbolt, all these buffs to Frostbolt really help her with that. And some of her new Frostbolt styles, which we might see more of, which I actually think we will see more of, will be good in those kind of map situations. Now, 
situations where you'll never go Frostbolt build is Tomb of the Spider Queen with these big waves of minions. You're going to want to go more into Blizzard for sure. But let's just kind of swap on over and take a look at her talents. You know what? We're going to do that with the browser, and then we're going to talk about things in the client. Let's try that. I've never done things that way. So we're going to launch the game, and we can pull ourselves over to the browser here. And just in general, she has... Jaina's probably one of the most flexible heroes in the entire game when it comes to how you decide you want to build her. Right, I, I really can't think of another hero that uh, you, you could see just situationally one talent changed from one game to another. For example, if you're, if you're a Jaina player that values having sustained mana for the hero, you could opt to go for Conj Pursuit or Arcane Intellect. And this is going to have two you know, very different effects. Like you're, you're, you're either grabbing additional slow up to 30%, or you're grabbing an additional duration on slow. Ring Lingering Chill is a phenomenal talent. Uh, or you're gonna get your mana retention here, or you might decide you want your mana retention at level four with Arcane Intellect, but you might not want either. You might just wanna go for pure ham, and w Winter's Reach, also another great option. So literally every single talent in these tiers are all viable, in my opinion. Uh, Ice flows probably, probably not. I, I just don't see the, the value of getting the additional width on that in most situations. But frostbitten, that's a little bit more ham oriented. Frost armor, if you're if you're ever against a Zara tool or a melee assassin, certain kind of situations like that, you pretty much always want to go frost armor. It just has great value. Uh, Ice lance, I mean, now that frostbolt has picked up some steam, we're going to see frostbolt builds. So just right out of the right out of the gates we know that the the with the frostbolt being changed people are starting to experiment a little bit more with styles now frostbolt builds have been created i have one on my website and there's many variations that work well but just to give you guys a good idea of what it looks like my ui probably is going to look really funky on this yeah i'm not even going to use it is uh just the base frostbolt range i mean it's 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 pretty it's pretty good right it's it's actually really not uh, all that short at all. You think of uh, some some cl close attacks, they really don't have the most range in the world. You gotta cast from pretty darn close to get the ability to, co to connect. But Jenna can already poke very safely out of range of a lot of other heroes with her base range. If you opt to go for Witch's Reach, that's 30% more range. Now this is just ridiculous. She can, she can just siege from afar and do a lot of great stuff. But what are you giving up to do that? Well, you're giving up either Lingering Chill, which has some great synergy, when you're going for something like Ice Lance at level 7. Because Ice Lance at level 7 gives you a 2 second reduction every time you throw a Frostbolt out on a chilled target. So the target is going to stay chilled for an additional 2 seconds. And then, so we're going to grab that, we're going to grab Lingering Chill. And then you have this, which is going to reduce the cooldown of Frostbolt by 2 seconds. At base, Frostbolt only has a four second cooldown. So every two seconds with this ability, you can throw out a Frostbolt. And then you can add a Pierce to it. So suddenly, you're a machine gun Jaina. And this is like the, the Frostbolt style. Now you can go for Winter's Reach. And it's fun, and it, it, against someone like Li Ming, if you're really worried about Li Ming, because Li Ming does have great range, it's probably not a bad call, because this is going to make you, you know, very powerful. But no, that this doesn't make Frostbolt any faster. It does travel relatively quick. I mean, relatively speaking, it, but that's that's still pretty easy to dodge. If that's going max range, and I'm throwing that at Li Ming, she's gonna juke it. Uh, a, a conscious player in lane in these situations is generally speaking going to be capable of dodging that in, in a lot of, especially when you're just going toe to toe in these kind of engagements. Now, once you get the slow on, things might be a little bit different, and that's when you can start to snowball a little bit more with your abilities as Jaina. But that's definitely a cool way to play the early game. It's strong. It's got the single target damage. You can allow it. You can start poking down the structures really nicely. And it's very good on maps. Like if you think about your, you'd probably want to go for Lingering Chill. If you're thinking about going up against the, the Punishers or Immortals where you know you're going to want a lot of single target damage versus the objective, I really do like the Frostbolt build. But if we're going on a map like Tomb of the Spider Queen, where there's a lot of AoE, you want a little bit more value on the lane clear, or your composition is just a composition that has a lot of wombo potential. You've got Johanna to condemn and pull them in, and you think that 
AOE is ultimately going to be the more valuable style for your composition rather than single target. Single target usually means uh, you're, you're looking to do a lot of dueling, a lot of like 1v1 brawling. That's where it's going to excel versus heroes like Zeratul, versus heroes like Vala, where you think you might need the additional brawl potential. So we're going to go in AOE build. Well, generally speaking, Lingering Chill doesn't have the same kind of value. This is It's nice to have the additional time, but you want more control. You want additional uh, slow on them in a lot of situations with Deep Chill, just because... Actually, is this... I think this is probably dated, unless we go to... Does this have the new colors? Yeah, we had to go to the PTR version. Heroes Next is a little bit behind, but it's okay. Nothing has changed in terms of where they are. The colors are just different, which is just so shiny and fancy. So Deep Chill is, is probably going to be your friend here. It's 30% it's slow, which has a huge impact. And, you know, for a long time, we saw Jaina players going for Invenom. And what is the value of Invenom? You know, that's, that's something that people ask a lot. In what case should I get Invenom? on Jaina. Where is that really going to see the most benefit? And it's when you're looking to take early game team fights. If you think that you're playing on Sky Temple and you can win a few of those shrines more efficiently by grabbing this early game power spike of Envenom. It's a one minute cooldown that does a lot of damage over 10 seconds, but when you're slowing them and that Envenom is ticking and you're hitting them with a few other abilities, it really does add up and helps you secure a lot more early game kills this can net you those advantages. So if you can take those early game kills and you can translate those kills into things like control of a, of a shrine, and that shrine is going to translate into structures falling down and suddenly your team has a level lead, it's well worth it. But if you don't think that there's enough value for the early game presence, and Venom is probably one of the lesser options for Jaina here at level four because it doesn't, it's not bad late game. It just doesn't have the same kind of effect. The uh, Snowstorm, is just additional 33 30% radius. So here looking at the game, let me just reset the talents very quickly and we can just kind of swap into the game. We we're just going to grab uh, deep chill because we want that. And look at the blizzard at base. I mean blizzard it's, it crashes down. That's pretty much enough to hit a wave of minions. We'll toggle those cooldowns. So you can you can pretty much hit all the minions with that. You know, just about sometimes they space out a little bit weirder based on the way they run into the enemy minions, but you grab this additional radius and suddenly you can zone out entire pathways like this. You think about entrances to uh, certain map objectives like you're talking just again Sky Temple, talking about the entrance to the Sky Temple. Guess what? That's the entire passageway uh, enclosed by Blizzard as it's raining down. This weirdly angled minion wave, it's going to have much better coverage, just not getting these two on the side. But it did hit an additional couple minions that it wouldn't have gotten otherwise. It's a very powerful just for those wombo styles, you throw it with Jaina. And, and the other big thing is you have to remember that Blizzard has two crashes. So often will only the first crash of your Blizzard hit your opponent but an additional 30% radius is really going to increase the chances that the target, especially in a retreating position, will crash down and hit them as they're trying to run away. The additional radius does get that value. Other options here at level four, Arcane Intellect. Again, if you if you didn't go for Conch Pursuit level one, um, you, you might want to go Arcane Intellect. If you're going for a, a, a build with Blizzard and you know you're going to be burning through your mana, you don't need Deep Chill. It's only 5% more slow. Conch Pursuit is honestly what I would recommend here for this style of play. Have that mana retention, collect the globes throughout the game, especially for larger maps where you're gonna be roaming around, or in any map really, it's just a great talent, and it's gonna give her a lot more just mana retention throughout the game, and then Snowstorm. Now, this is when, again, things are always gonna be very reactionary. You're always gonna be picking a lot of your talents, based on what your opponent's doing. So if your opponent does have those, those melee heroes, they're gonna really be gunning for you, and you feel like you need the, the safety, because Trust me, if you watch competitive heroes, you know how scary a, a hero like uh, Zeratul can be for a Jaina. He's going to be hunting that Jaina. Well, Frost Armor gives him, gives her so much more safety. They, they, they are chilled when they attack you. In every eight seconds, you can block a basic attack. 
from the enemy here, reducing the damage by 75%. So it's kind of like a block, but really it allows you to run away. As they attack you, they get slowed down. It gives you a little bit of space between your opponent, and then you can turn around and throw out a Frostbolt, throw out a Kona Cold, start doing some damage, and it allows Jaina to kite those melee assassins and fight them on a more even footing, which is absolutely crucial in, in having a fair fight against them, because if they're in her face and they're just unloading on her, she's not going to be having a very good time. Uh, additionally, you could see Frostbitten picked up. We do definitely see uh, Frostbitten picked up at times where th we're looking for a little bit more burst. It gives just additional bonus from Frostbite for Jaina, and Frostbite, of course, is her trait. So this is just, you know, when you're going for that, if, if you just want to go for a blow-up style with Snowstorm and you want the AoE, Frostbitten is definitely an option that you can pick up on Jaina. For heroics, they're both they're both fine options for Jaina. Oh, we have a cat in the house. And she looks alarmed. Hi cat. Stay up there. No. Stay. She's trying to get in my lap. And there she is. <sighs> Cats, man. They just take whatever they want. All right, so heroics. Water Elemental and Ring of Frost, both very good. Now, this is when we start to talk about one of Jaina's strengths, which she starts to really fulfill towards the later game, and that is her ability to flank her opponents. Jaina is, is, is all about... Uh, you know, being safe and a good good source of damage. Sure, that's what she that's what she's good at. But she's also phenomenal as a flanker. So you know, this is something that requires coordination. This is something that you can do in quick match on your own. It's a little bit riskier. But when you're playing with a coordinated team, you can just kind of wait, wait, wait. When you see your warrior initiating, the enemy team doesn't have eyes on you. You come around the side, you throw down the blizzard, you start zoning, you back away, you just kind of play safe, you poke. Suddenly, their focus is split. Oh, no, Jane is down here. Oh, no, they're doing this. What do we do? You just back away, back away, constantly poking over the wall, being obnoxious. And before you know it, they slip up. Your warrior gets to play. Jaina goes in, starts unloading, doing all of her damage. And voila! I mean, it, how many tournaments, how many matches do we see Jaina's do those kind of plays? It happens constantly. You think of players like K1 Pro that are famous for those style of for that style of play, and when you do that, when you do that, you can argue that Water Elemental is the safer option. Water Elemental is. In, in, in this in this scenario, really good for anyone that comes down here alone against you. They come down, they pop down, you throw your frostbolt out, and you drop your water elemental right in their face. So you just pop it down. I actually selected water elemental on the browser, and I'm like, why can't I cast it? I confused myself there. You pop it down, and, and, you, and you just kite them back as you retreat, and you get to safety. And then the water elemental, also good for chasing down those targets as they are retreating from the fights. It's just a strong heroic in general. Ring of Frost, on the other other hand, I'm uh, just going to grab random talents, is more of a wombo style. So you've got, you've got Maw, you've got Void Prison, you've got uh, even Sundering that's going to set up these big initiations or Bless Shield from Johanna. You've got any kind of control on the rest of your team and you can land some sick, nasty Ring of Frosts that can just outright win games. Ring of Frost also has great synergy when you're specking into Blizzard. If you go for Snowstorm, let's again, let's just reset the talents to show this off. You go Snowstorm, let's go Frostbitten, and let's go Ring of Frost. You throw it down and then suddenly you've just got this full control. Like there's so many scenarios where it's just like, oh, there's, there's, there's no winning situation. You're getting hit everywhere. You just cover all all options uh, with that combo. It's just full coverage. It's like it's like perfect, honestly, when you do this because there is there's just no there's nowhere to go, man. It's just pain, pain coming down from the icy realm. Level late game talents. Let's 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 talk about level thirteen and on at this point. If you do go a frostbolt build, you can. Uh, let's let's do our frostbolt build here. Lingering with frost shards and ice lance, and we're gonna go water elemental because water elemental is probably the preferred heroic for this style because you're gonna be doing a lot of these cheeky flanks with all these abilities. And you're feeling confident, you go icy veins. This is when Jaina becomes absolutely freaking disgustingly strong and just single target focus and blow up. 
So I'm going to grab these talents here in the game. Water Ellie and then Icy Vein. Swap over to the game really quick. And you can just see the kind of power that she has. So you pop Icy Veins and guess what? Frostbolt. Frostbolt. Oh, I actually have the reset cooldowns on. Um, so that wasn't fair. I cheated, guys. I cheated. You just want to pop your abilities. Pop Icy Veins. Just pretty much constant icy veins piercing through that tower. A lot of focus. Granted, I know I stood there and I soaked it, but she burned that tower down like it was nothing, and she had pierce with it. So that's damage you could be doing to two targets. You think about situations where there's a hero, like a medic, or like a hero right behind that warrior that warrior is constantly blocking for, and you want to whittle down the target behind the warrior. This is a great way to do that because it, it is going to pierce one target. So fighting over a shrine, an infernal shrines, you have to be careful because there's a lot of minions that are going to absorb the shots but in a lot of other situations where that's not the case those pierces can get crazy crazy value uh onto the back target not even looking for for the primary hit you're looking for that target behind and just the damage can be can be really 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 scary as it continues to go through looking at level uh the other option at level 13 that is quite common is improved ice block now this is when if you're a new Jaina player and you need a safety a precaution you're against big burst on the enemy team they They've got a Butcher, they've got a lot of stuns, uh, they've got Shadow Assault Zera tool, they've got Pyroblast, anything like that, it is an absolute necessity to grab Ice Block because you can deny those abilities. As Pyroblast is traveling to you, you can just Ice Block and deny that 100 second cooldown. Just like, nice, nice, nice up Pyroblast, bro. That was really cool of you to waste your ability for me, thanks. Um, and, you know, it's the job's done. It's easy as that. So it's very, very good for that. But we also have a Stormfront, which is going to just increase the cast range of Blizzard. Now, the only time I ever recall seeing Stormfront used at the highest level was really a cheeky, cheeky, cheeky style of play where we saw Kael'thas go a Flame Strike build, we saw Jaina go a Blizzard build, and we saw Asmodan go a Globe of Annihilation build. And this trio of damage dealers sent a barrage of ridiculous quantities of damage from afar, literally one-shotting three people at a time, late game globes with the Flame Strike and Blizzard. It was nightmarishly powerful, and <laughs> if you want to do something fun like that, go for Stormfront. Otherwise, I, 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 Stormfront's a great book, by the way. Uh, Dresden Files. <laughs> Anyways, uh, improved ice block and and icy veins are going to be your go-to's icy veins when you're going for the machine gun style. It's not it's not a necessity to go frostbolt build for icy veins. I should point out it's good no matter what. Uh, that's when you're feeling like you just want to bring the pain and you have the safety to do so. But if you feel like you need the sustain, this is the best defensive option in the game for her until level twenty. So improved ice block is quite valuable. Moving down to level 16, obviously, if you're specking into Blizzard, you want the third crash down. This is great. This is a great talent, but it's hard to pass up some of these other talents. Northern Exposure is essentially Hunter's Mark, but it's it, it's two seconds of AoE Cone of Cold. Now, damage done by Cone of Cold that are on, wait, damage by Cone of Cold are also afflicted with vulnerable, increasing the damage taken. So you want to open up. You want to pop this Cone of Cold down. These enemies now become exposed for two seconds, and then all your damage is going to do a lot of extra damage. So Northern Exposure is very common, but you're against melee assassins. You're against people that are constantly chasing you down. You can't forget about Numbing Blast. So you have to. You can cast this out, and it will root chilled targets for one second. Now this means that the target has to already be chilled before you cast Numbing Blast or else they won't get rooted. So if you open up with this, it won't actually benefit uh, on, with the root on that target. It must have the chill affected on it first. Ice Barrier um, is a fun talent. It's a cool idea, but it really just doesn't feel that good compared to everything else. And I really do advise against it in most situations. And last but not least, we have level 20, where I'm going to tell you 90% of the time, you should be selecting Bolt of the Storm. Bolt of the Storm is just too darn good to pass up. It's safety. It's late game kills means so much. And level 20 death timer is, is like a full minute. Using Bolt, is 70 second cooldown so if you can stay alive for a cooldown 
rather than being out of the fight for the same amount of time, uh, I think that cooldown is is well, well warranted uh, when you consider that. Now, arcane power is a cool idea. It is. And if you if you went like a full blizzard style or you're casting from afar and you pop arcane power, you might be able to make a cool power play. Maybe. But Bolt just is too much of a power option in general. Can put you in position aggressively, can put you to safety defensively, and it's just too valuable. If you go a for full Frostbolt build and you're just looking to have a good time, grab Winter Mute because your Water Ellie is going to be shooting at Frostbolts just as fast as you, and it's going to actually seem ridiculous. But again, Water Elementals are focused down a little bit easier than you would think, and it's not always the safest option to go for. Still a fun way to, to play the game for sure, but Bolt is just is just the way to do it. So you should be grabbing Bolt. You should be grabbing either Northern or Numbing. I tend to like Northern with Ice Block. This is one style of build here. Obviously, you can find an, all like a bunch of options, a bunch of varieties of, of Jaina builds that I have on my website, solidjakegg.com. If you want to go the Blizzard style, once again, it would look it would look more like this Conj with Blizzard. And then often you go Frost Armor. You could grab Ring of Frost in many situations. Um, honestly, I would probably just go Ice Block just because you want that safety with Northern Exposure and then Bolt of the Storm. Really, really good, and uh, it's a lot of fun. And just to show off one final thing within the game, as we grab our final talents, we get oh, we're not even we're not even leveled up. Set level to twenty. Woohoo! And oh, it's gonna reset all my talents. Okay, we're gonna go full Frostbolt all the way. Water Ellie, Icy Veins, Northern Exposure, and then Winter Mute. And then we're just gonna pop this guy down. Pop icy veins. You can't you can't even see how fast we're both shooting. We're not even hitting him. <laughs> but it's it's a lot of fun to have the double the double water Ellie. Uh, the double frost bolts going out from him. Double blizzard raining down. A lot of power level 20, but still. You should probably be going for Bolt. Just too good of an ability. Jaina, going to be seeing a, a ton of play. Um, she's She always has been prime in the meta, but with the changes to this most recent patch, you really sh will be seeing less early Kael'thas, I think. Kael'thas' early game is significantly weaker. Jaina is great, great in the early game. She she really is. She's in a phenomenal position. She's only gotten better. The nerf to her auto attacks really doesn't affect her. Autos weren't really that meaningful to begin with. They were fine, but yeah, sure, they definitely hit a lot weaker now, but her frost bolts just give her greater burst and greater impact when it comes to getting kills and opens up more potential for her to go frost bolt styles of play, which could be really fun at the end of the day. Um, Try out the, the styles that exist on the guide's website. I'm sure most of you already know how to play Jaina, but this is just, of course, a great resource. And remember, flanking is your friend when you're playing as Jaina. In a lot of map situations, when, when the enemy team is pushing with a Dragonite, you want to look for those flanks to really catch them off guard because not only does Jaina provide a lot of damage, she provides massive slows. And those slows give your team huge options to push in and take a, a huge edge on the fight, especially at level 20 when you have Bolt, you can get out of a lot of bad spot situations, and a huge blizzard from behind enemy lines that you're not expecting can really turn things around. That's also when Numbing Blast comes in to be a great resource. When you have to turn around, you have to escape. Num Numbing Blast is just going to give you a, a lot of additional space to get away if you don't feel confident in getting away from grabbing Northern Exposure. That's gonna give you more burst, but less safety. And it all comes down to how confident you are with your own positioning. And Jaina just has so many flexible talents that provide various options for that style of player. Do I want aggression? Do I want defense? And there's pretty much an option in every talent tier um, that offer something of that nature as you move forward. Make your own build, try it out. Try out the builds on my website itself. And once again, solidjakegg.com slash guides if you want to be specific. And good luck in the Nexus. Please hit the follow button, subscribe, and GG's, everyone. I'm going to go play some Hero League for a change in just a moment. So I'll see you there.